I feel like my name is Escobar, I go extra hard, extra regular but Hello brothers and sisters, welcome back to my channel. So today I have a new video, which is the top 15 things I hate about my car. Um, it's a little bit chilly outside, it's raining, I'm not sure if you can tell. I'll try to clean up the lens and stuff like that whenever the raindrops hit it. But no more excuses, gotta get a video out. So today, the top 15 things I hate about my car. There's gonna be a new video coming up soon, the top 15 things I do like about my car, but let's get right into it. The first thing I don't like about my car is the fact that you can't check the oil fluids, you can't check any of the uh, fluids inside the car without having a special screwdriver or a system checking it. You can't physically check anything. It's just the way BMW is and I just don't like that about the E90. The second thing I don't like about my car, <clears throat> the E90s especially, is that the auxiliary ports where it fits in, is the chips are really flimsy and they break really easy and they just give me a pain once they break it they replace the whole center console in order to fix it which is just not worth it but that is the second thing that i don't like when I this car gets curb rash like it's nothing man it is really pouring i'm like wet all over look at the window I'm trying to make my video over here for you guys but it's just not working but I'm going to pull through this. I'm going to go out there with this stupid t-shirt. My mom's going to hate me for this. But, you know, when we got to get a video out, we've got to get a video out. So, let's get right into it. So, number four, guys, is going to have to be the price. The value of this car depreciates so fast. So, I got this one. It's worth 13 grand last year with 60,000 miles. It's a Kelly Blue Book value. Now, adding three miles onto this car, already it says instead of 13,000, 11, five. Now, only 3,000 miles. If I look up this exact same car on Craigslist or another website or any car dealership, they're going to price this car with 100,000 miles around 7 to 8K. Now, that is a lot of money. That's just all the money down the drain. So the more miles you put on this car, just know that the value of it is going to depreciate really fast. So number five. This kind of tags along with number four because... I really don't like how this is the first year of the E90. It has a lot of problems. It just tends to have, you know, random problems that shouldn't happen to a car. But because it's the first year, it tends to have problems. So that's just something I don't like about having the first year of the E90. The sixth thing I don't like about this car is the fuel, uh, the fuel economy and the fuel gauge. There's a miles per gallon sign, which I'll be showing you guys. Um, it kind of just goes up and down just randomly. It really doesn't do anything. Another thing is when you're running out of, running out of gas, um, it shows that you're using fuel reserve all over your dash as if there's something broken with your car. It just makes the car look kind of cheap and it doesn't look, you know, nice with your friends. You got lights everywhere on your car saying you're out of gas, you're almost going to be out of gas. It just doesn't, doesn't look nice, not appealing. Number seven has to be the insurance. I am paying around 180 for this car. Now, I, look, I know if you live in other countries, you probably don't even have to pay for insurance. But this country, United States, obviously, you have to pay for insurance. And my insurance is almost double my car payments. So it is absolutely ridiculous to own a car like this with that kind of, this is a 2006, like if it probably gets in a car accident, it's probably not even gonna repair, it's gonna be the value of the car. And the value of the car, like I said, depreciates a lot. So I don't know if that's really worth paying the insurance, but for me driving this car every single day, I enjoy it. And yeah, I guess it is worth it to me, but many others wouldn't, wouldn't agree. The eighth thing I don't like about this car is, is kind of my fault, this is my personal car only, is the steering wheel. It has two buttons that shouldn't really be there. I mean, if I can replace the buttons, I would, but it's kind of like a lengthy process. I'm sure you could, but I already sold my old steering wheel and I forgot that there are buttons on my previous steering wheel that apply to settings on this one. I can't change the way the button looks on my settings and how it functions. I can't change how it functions with a certain kind of button that already came with the car. I know it's kind of weird to say, but these buttons are going to always look like this and I can't change it unless I order some new buttons, which is kind of dumb that an E90 wheel, the sports wheel has different button layouts than the previous non sport So number nine is not really a serious issue, but it is something that I'm kind of concerned with, which is tunability. This car, since it is a 330, it's not a 335, it doesn't have a twin turbo already installed, it's, it's kind of limited with the upgrades it has. And if there are upgrades, it's kind of a pricey because it's not something they sell often. Um, if I want to add like twin turbo or anything like that or some high performance upgrades to this car, it's going to cost me a lot or as I'm probably not even going to find those parts unless you're going to be imported from some other country. And again, like I said, it's going to cost a lot of money. So 330, the parts to upgrade and something like that is not really a lot of options. So if you've got the type of person that loves a lot of um, 
power in your car the 330 i don't think is the best idea 328 325 i would go with the 335 but just know that those cars tend to have more problems another thing i don't like about this car is the interior painting it chips everywhere so if you're